and welcome to the Government News Brief for Thursday, April 27, 2017. In the news this evening, environmental health and climate change issues to be addressed at the Caribbean Public Health Agency CARFAS Research Conference, Guyana Police Force records significant success in solving crimes, and Region 1 youths graduate from the Board of Industrial Training. These and other stories when the news returns. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying with us. I am Renette LaFleur. Here are the details. Environmental health and climate change to be addressed at the 62nd Health Research Conference. Delicia Haynes has the details. The 62nd Annual Health Research Conference, jointly hosted by the Government of Guyana and the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, is set to be launched this evening. The conference will be held under the theme Climate Change, the Environment and Human Health. Executive Director of CARFA, Dr. James Hospitalis, outlines the objectives of the conference. The conference later this week is going to be a whole feast of papers to help improve health policy making, to educate and update the doctors and nurses and some of the more current discoveries. And, and there'll be news there for people as well about people who have certain health conditions, what to do. Another exciting thing we have is we have a climate, climate change and health panel, expert panel, with experts from the region and international experts from NIH, from US CDC and so on. So that's coming together and we'll be meeting. The annual conference usually results in the provision of strategic direction in analyzing, defining and responding to public health priorities of the Caribbean while preventing diseases, promoting health and responding to public health threats and emergencies. The theme of this year's conference captures its focus. The issues of environment very relevant to Guyana, so we're really pleased to be here. Uh, this year in Guyana, we'll be doing a lot of different activities. The ongoing mon monitoring of disease and supporting you with lab testing. Uh, we'll be working on this tourism and health program, working with support minister with her tobacco legislation. Those are some of the, uh, some of the areas. Uh, we have a six-point policy package that the CARICOM has agreed to help tackle the food environments that children are getting fat on. So we're looking at mandatory nutritional labeling to empower consumers with information. We're looking at reducing the amount of advertising of junk food to children, seeing how we can reduce fat, salt and sugar, more fruits and vegetables. Public health priorities that are to be discussed at the conference include family and community health, environmental health, communicable and non-communicable diseases, nutrition, obesity, violence, and mental health. The conference is scheduled to run from April 27th to 29th at the Marriott Hotel and will feature a number of experts in various capacities from across the Caribbean. For the Government News Brief, Delicia Haynes. The Crime Chief says the Guyana Police Force has recorded significant success in solving crimes thus far for this year. Delon Sanko tells us more. Senior Superintendent and Crime Chief Wendell Blanham says that the Criminal Investigation Department has been performing capably so far for 2017 with an 85% success rate in solving crimes. They have been doing fairly well. They clear up rate for murders, as I indicated earlier. We are at an 85% in um, clear up rate. And um, we have been, in terms of serious crimes for the period January to date, when we did an analysis for the last period, as last year, we are on par. So we have been doing fairly well. Benham says that there's concerns about the reported number of street crimes being committed. We have the gun robberies and we have robberies whereby persons are leaving the commercial banks with large amounts of cash in their possession. Those are some of the um, crime, types of crimes that we are very concerned about. So we're working with the intelligence arm of the force to ensure that we bring the situation under control. But we have been arresting persons, we have been dismantling criminal groups. Lenham explained that they are major challenges when the high-profile criminals are bailed. I don't want to reignite the whole debate about bail, but um, when these known characters or high-profile criminals they're granted bail and they have matters before the courts that kind of impose a very difficult or unfavorable condition upon us. So many of the persons that we are charging, those are persons who would have come into contact before with the law enforcement officers 
and uh, we would have charged them on their back house based on the um, bail either being granted at the Georgia Magistrate Court or the High Court. The Crime Chief notes that despite the situation, ranks will continue to do their best to execute the mandate to serve and protect. The Lon Sanko for the Government News Brief. The indigenous village of Maruka Region 1 now has 47 youths with varying skill sets that can make life for them and other villagers better. Find out how from Delon Sanko. 47 youths completed training under the Board of Industrial Training, BIT, of the Ministry of Social Protection. The six-month training program targeted school dropouts and teenage mothers, among others. The youths from Quibana and Santa Rosa Village graduated in the areas of catering and cake decoration, plumbing and blocks building. The graduation ceremony was held at the Flavio La Rose Hall, Santa Rosa, Region 1 on Wednesday. Technical Officer of BIT, Mohammed Shahid, says the aim of the training is to equip youths with the relevant knowledge and skills in their desired trade area so that they can realize their full potential. Their desired trade areas, we want youths to engage in training that they like, areas of training that they like. When we like something, then we put our all into it. Too often persons get into training areas because it is being offered and it is not what they really like. So we are saying that we are offering training for youths in areas that they like. BIT board member and principal of the Essequibo Training Institute, Michael Turner, encourages the youths to advance in their studies. Emphasis was placed on entrepreneurship. Persevere, no pain, no gain. Persevere. You have insurance called faith. When everything seems bleak, be faithful. Is the cloud behind there? It might look dark and you can't see beyond it, but as soon as you get through the cloud, there's a silver lining. Has everyone ever had the experience of going through some struggles and the day you give up, the solution came the next day? Mad does make you feel bad. I know about it. And being a man of faith, there is a driver called Jesus who will make, help you make it to the place called success. You can't do anything in this world unless you put your hands in the hand of the Almighty God. Deputy Tushau of Santa Rosa, Graham Hopkinson, and Deputy Tushau of Kibana, Marine Henry, both encouraged the youths to put their training into practice for the region's development. The Government Information Agency spoke with some of the youths about their journey while being trained. So graduating in which, uh, which field? Um, block making. Block making? Yeah. How has the journey been for you? Well, this is been it's nice. It is everything. At least you're getting off things you didn't know. At least me didn't know before. And, and what do you plan to do with your training? My training is uh, I plan to do this in block making as a business. BIT training targets persons from ages 15 to 35. Delon Sanko for the Government News Brief. The business community was briefed on the advancement within the natural resources sector by Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman. Tiffany Rodius reports. The Minister of Natural Resources, Raphael Trotman, shared the Ministry's achievements in 2016 and future plans as he met with private sector representatives. Speaking at the Umana Yana, Minister Trotman says he is willing to meet with companies to share more information on the Ministry's work. After this engagement, we hope to, eat, to meet with each of your organizations individually to further the discussions. Businesses and stakeholder representatives, including the Joshong Chamber of Commerce and Industry, GCCI, attended the briefing. The minister's outreach efforts were commended by GCCI Executive Director Kirk Hollingsworth, who notes that it bodes well for future engagements. I'd like to commend uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources and the on this outreach program. I think this is the type of thing that players in the private sector as we call it for, and spells well the future of collaboration and exploitation. The business community was also informed of ExxonMobil's plan to promote local content in the emerging oil and gas industry by the company's public and government affairs manager, Kimberly Brasington. She says Exxon will be working with the AIA company that specializes in local content development and socioeconomic development globally. We're bringing them into Guyana to help us launch our local business development center. The center will be launched in July. Small to medium-scale businesses will be allowed to register their interest and receive training. 
Brazington explains that the centre is ultimately to build capacity locally to support the oil and gas industry. For the Government News Brief, Tiffany Rogers. Region 10 youths given the opportunity to explore their future goals at a Ministry of Education career fair. Neola Damon tells us more. Speaking at the opening of the career fair at the Linden Technical Institute, LTI, Director of Youth Melissa Carmichael says that the students should take advantage of the opportunity presented to explore their future options. Why put up all of this fanfare just to see organizations set up booths and stand around to watch you as you pass? You might be wondering, I, why more of this? But this morning, I'm here to let you know that because we have you at heart, not only in Region 4, but also in Region 10, we want to help you to start, to begin somewhere, and by exposing you to all the organizations represented here today, we give you the opportunity to choose to start making decisions, to say whether one career or the other may fit you. The youth director says that her agency will continue to work assiduously to provide opportunities for the youth's benefit. She notes that the works will be under the leadership of the minister within the Ministry of Education, Nicolette Henry. Meanwhile, Region 10 Regional Chairman Rennes Moran suggests that the students be given guidance in their respective schools before entering their career choices. The Regional Chairman notes this will help direct the students to their goals based on their strengths and ability. The children here use this opportunity as you go around to the various booths to formulate in your mind where you want to be how you want to get there. And I'm saying to you, the sky is the limit. Many of you might be coming from a single parent home. Things might not be how you want it to be, but that should not hinder you from reaching for the stars. The regional chairman is urging students to establish a backup plan besides their dream career in case their original plans don't work out. Neil Adim for Government News Brief. We have come to the end of today's edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. Gina has an active Facebook page and we encourage you to visit and like us so you can be informed as the news unfolds. Do join us again tomorrow for another edition of the Government News Brief. I am Renetta LaFleur. Have a great evening.